Welcome to ECU Flash Training Part 8. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with our Tefra V7 Mass Airflow specific ROM files. We're going to take a look at the calibration process of working with our MAF specific tables, learning how to calibrate things so that our fuel delivery is proper, whether we're going to be in open or closed loop conditions. We're going to move into EvoScan and learn what channels the data log and then moving into our Megalog viewer, how to take that data and plot it properly and most efficiently so we can review our closed and open loop parameters so that we can dial our fuel in as fast as possible. There's going to be a lot of tips and tricks in this video that's going to speed up your tuning process greatly. So without further wait, let's jump into this video so we can check it out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our Tefra V7 math based ROM files. So this is going to be if you don't want to convert over to speed density and you still want to retain your mass airflow sensor, we need to go through the calibration process for doing our fuel tuning in a very specific way. So that's what this video is going to be focusing on. We're going to be covering other aspects such as boost control and spark timing tuning and knock control and another separate videos here. So this is just going to focus on what we need to know about mass airflow sensor calibration and tuning here with our Tefra V7 ROMs. Now, before we get into doing any actual examples and uh, going through the actual workflow and calibration process, I wanna cover something very important that we haven't covered yet in any of our training course videos. That's going to be getting a wideband reading accurately into our Evo scan as well as into our data logs to review in our Megalog Viewer software. We're gonna be able to take that wideband air fuel reading and do some custom math channels to allow us to see things and speed up our calibration process. It's gonna be showing you a little bit later in this video here. So it's gonna be really important that you have and you can establish your, your wideband air fuel accurately in your data logs. So in order to accomplish this, I generally use AEM widebands. They're relatively cheap and easy to work with and they have a nice feature built into them that's going to be a serial output from the actual gauge. So if you're working with a 30-4100 or a 30-4110, Coming up on the screen right now is the basic schematic right from that PDF instruction sheet that comes with the actual gauge. We're going to find it has a blue wire. The blue wire is going to be the serial stream output that we're going to be interfacing with our laptop that's going to allow us to log our air fuel through EvoScan and our data logs. Now, we need to have an RS-232 DB9 or a serial port, depending on what you're going to be calling the connector. We need to have a DB9 male connector. And we're going to take that blue wire and we're going to wire into pin number two location on our DB9 male connector. That's going to be interfacing when we plug in a USB to serial connector to plug it into our laptop. That's going to allow the signal to come in. Now we also have to run another wire to pin five on our male DB9 connector. That's going to go to a chassis ground. That's relatively simple to create. Now if you're not comfortable with doing this, STM and Map Performance sell this specific cable that you need for logging your wideband and it's going to have one one wire from our pin 5 going to chassis ground so you're going to be grounding the one wire the other wire is going to connect to your wideband serial which is going to be the blue wire relatively simple so you can construct construct this if you're uh, going to be wiring savvy you can just take an old serial cable and uh, again connect your wiring to your pin number two to the blue wire and pin number five to chassis ground and then we're going to find if you have the newer style widebands. So the inline wideband controller or an X series wideband, you'll find coming up on the screen, they still have that blue wire coming out. That's going to be our serial stream output. So we can still use this for logging purposes. Now, when we get to that point of going in and selecting which specific model wideband we're working with, we need to jump into EvoScan so we can configure it properly in here so that when we're logging it, it's going to be displaying properly. So if we move up to the top here under wideband, we're going to find we have this option here, select wideband serial COM port. We can find right now there's going to be nothing there when I click on this. That's because it's not recognizing any actual COM ports plugged into my laptop. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.